So I got a call from mom this morning. We had a storm last night, came through. One of the trees came down, broke the fence. So, they wanted me to come over here and look at it, see if I get it fixed for them. Looks like the bottom and all the slats are gonna be okay. But this piece is aluminum. And it might be galvanized. But it's got a nice bend in it. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that straightened back out enough to use or not. We'll take it home and try. So I'll see about getting this straightened out and then come back with tools, get the fence fixed tomorrow. So while I was over here fixing the fence, Bailey told me I had a package, which I was confused. I don't usually get packages at mom and dad's house. But a viewer of dad's was nice enough to send me the snap-on timing gauge for two strokes. I've been wanting one of these forever. So I want to put out his last name, but thank you, Dennis. That, that is awesome. I've, I've wanted one of these forever, and I will surely put this to use. Alright, well, the day's plans changed again, so that pool contracting company that has the Duramax and the 6 liter with trans problems just called me. Now they've got a backhoe that's down, uh, and it's on a customer job site, so I am not really prepared right now for a service call. Um, I just went out to meet somebody for lunch, and then I went and checked on that fence over at mom and dad's house. So I gotta run back to the shop real quick, uh, change into some work clothes grab a couple things and then we're gonna go out there and look at a case that's a no start I believe he said it's a case 580 backhoe but I'm waiting on him to text me the info on the unit and the address of it so now we're gonna head down to Camby and go take a look at that we're out here on it it's case 580 it's got a Cummins in it first thing I noticed when I got up here is the condition of the fuel hose on this before the water and fuel separator he said this morning it was having a hard time starting. It wasn't getting any fuel out of the water and fuel separator. So we pumped the priming pump on it. I'm gonna go ahead and just get that hose replaced to start with because I'm willing to bet that's where we're sucking air through. So, like I said, just looking at this thing here, this fuel line is all cracked. It goes down inside the frame rail, comes back up right here and out to the sending unit. So, let me go ahead Use some heel nose vice grips to cap off this fuel line. I'm guessing it's dry, but I don't want it leaking. I'm gonna take this little section of line with me. We're gonna run to the parts store and we're gonna go get probably seven foot of hose or so. I wanna make sure we get enough fuel lines pretty cheap. And we're just gonna go ahead and run all new fuel hose up to that priming pump. Then we'll prime it and try starting it. But just seeing how deteriorated this hose is, that's the obvious place to start with why this thing's not starting and the customer saying he had to reprime the tractor earlier today. So with the line off, that vice grip's pinching the hose off. There's no fuel coming out of it. It's probably empty all the way through. But it also does a uh, second duty here by holding that filter up to make sure it doesn't fall because I don't want to leave a mess here. We're out in some grass in a common area. I've got cardboard down, but it's a pretty nice neighborhood. I really don't want to tear anything up. So that should be good till we get back. Then we'll get the new hose in, we'll run it, and then go. The uh, water and fuel separator is also completely dry, so that just furthers our theory that this is our problem. All right, we got the line on. I primed it at the manual primer, and it's running. So I'm gonna sit here and run it for a minute because we probably are still gonna have some air in the injection pump and lines. Go ahead and get all that ran out. And then I gotta hop underneath of it here and we're gonna have to finish installing the fuel line. It's laying in the cluster, but it's not zip tied in. Uh, it's held on with zip ties to the other group of lines there. I cut them all out when I do this, so I'm gonna hop under there and re-zip tie them all once I get this going. Fuel gauge is broken. I did check with the flashlight though that we did have fuel before we started this as well. So we got the new fuel line there. The customer has a brand new fuel filter for that inline. Uh, he asked us not to replace it at this time. He'll do it when he gets home tonight. Fuel line runs down under the frame rail, comes back up under the cab there, and goes back forward. We picked up seven foot of line just to play it safe. We have 
um, between 18 inches and 24 inches left. So when I'm out in the field, we always try to err on the side of caution when we go get supplies. But he called us about 2 o'clock on a Friday afternoon that this tractor was down. It's 4.30 now, and we've already had it running. All that's left is I need to hop under there and replace all the zip ties, like I said, on the line. And uh, he'll have his tractor back tonight. He can load it up on the trailer and take it home so it's not strained at all weekend at a customer's facility, or, you know, customer's house. But it's case 580L, super, or 580 Super L. Just an older backhoe. So we'll get this thing finished up, get the bill for him, but for an emergency call out on a Friday afternoon, like I said, we're about two hours on this job. And uh, I'm guessing by the time we get all figured up, he'll be less than $400 to have this thing fixed on a Friday afternoon. So he's just as happy as can be. So we got these lines all zip tied up. Just want to double check after it's been sitting for a few minutes that we're going to start back up. Started right up. Idling nice and smooth. I'm going to call this one good for now. Um, they said it just died and wouldn't restart. And like I said, they had to prime it this morning. So after seeing the condition of that line, the uh, water and fuel separator was completely dry. And uh, there was no fuel in the line. So we're pretty confident that was going to be our problem. But no matter what, we always want to start with that. You know, start with the obvious problems you can see. But we should be good to go. So we'll get all the paperwork on this one filled out and figured up for him. And He'll be good to go. Also, um, this video should be posted Friday afternoon. Uh, people have been asking about live streams. I've been doing a lot of live streams lately. Um, I usually delete live streams when they're done. Uh, now, though, if you uh, go to our Patreon, you can catch all of our live streams there. That's I'm putting them on private, putting the URL up there for them. Um, all the money from Patreon is going to our new pay it forward thing we're doing. Uh, we're going to try to help people that can't afford to fix their cars and get their cars back on the road. The money from that is going to go towards parts, and we're going to donate our labor. So, if, you know, if you can donate, that would be awesome. If not, you know, I'm not expecting anyone to. Um, but that'll be up there, and I do want to start Friday night live, live streams every week. So, Q&A time with us. You can sit and ask all of us questions. You guys can pick the topics. We can talk about just about anything. Um... But yeah, I'm going to try to start doing that every Friday night now. And then we'll still have the random live streams as they come up. I mean, we screw around in the shop a lot at late nights. So we'll probably still have those as well. All right, so the case is all good to go. He said he's got about another hour worth of digging to do with it tonight. So that should be a good little test to put it through. Went ahead and discounted the service call. and took the labor down a little bit for him. So he was less than $300 for an emergency service call with parts on a Friday afternoon. So... I mean, I think I couldn't get much more fair than that. He's as happy as can be. You know, the, their company's been giving us a lot of business lately, so I'm not afraid to, you know, give them a little discount to help them out, too, because, you know, stuff gets expensive, and I like to try to help people out when I can.